Joining us live now, the former Secret Service agent and president at Lionheart International Services, Timothy Miller. Can you believe we're talking again about something like this so soon after we spoke so often two months ago? The first attempted at assassination on Donald Trump, Tim. I feel a bit conflicted, though. I mean, well done for Secret Service and the authorities for taking this guy down. But what was the car doing there in the first place? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and I'm sad that we're having to talk about this again. With that said, it's a very different situation this time because we had two on on the uh, their game Secret Service agents that immediately identified the threat and took action and ensured that the president was uh, safe. And, and let me be clear, too, that that's not a win for us. It, it, it's kind of a partial win because the Secret Service is all about being proactive and making sure things like this don't happen. And I thought the sheriff was very forthright because he mentioned the fact that, well, if this had been a sitting president, we would have had full coverage around the golf course, and thus this wouldn't have happened. That's very truthful. Mm. And that tells you that the Secret Service, despite what happened in Butler, and despite uh, the current threats against this president, is still not affording the same resources that they would a sitting president. And I think those are the questions that need to be answered. Yeah, I think that's a good question too. Just just on what was found, I mean, I just this has stuck with me. I've just got this image in my mind, Tim, about a, a rifle barrel that was sticking out of the fence. I mean, that was the giveaway for those agents who were there. What do you make of the weapon, though, the backpack, the GoPro, the scope? The, yeah, we can see it here. What, what do you make of that situation, the intent here? Well, let me be clear. The investigation is brand new. I've learned early through my investigations. You let the facts come out right now. You know, we are very fortunate because we have a live suspect that we can do uh, interviews, investigations on, and there's a lot more information that needs to come out. But with that said, you can see on the face of it that it was an intentional, focused attack on the president. When you're hanging up ballistic material and you're waiting silently for the president to come to the hole that you're going to be able to target, Houston, you have a big problem. This, this person is very intent on taking the life of the president. Fortunately, a good citizen saw the suspect running got engaged, got involved, notified the police. And so now we have a suspect that we're talking to. And let me be clear, there are, there's a whole lot of investigating ahead. Forensic data, we, we need to identify who he is, where he came from. All this under the umbrella, remember, there is still an Iranian threat that the Secret Service is aware of that is trying to take the life of President Trump. So this is a very, very fortunate day yet again for the Secret Service because you had Secret Service agents that were on their game. They they prevented it. Yeah. And now they have an investigative pathway forward. But at the end of the day, that's not what the Secret Service wants to happen. No, that's true. Tim, uh, you've been generous with your time. I know you've got another interview to get to. Just one more here. I mean, we've still got a little race left to run on this election campaign. So how should this change things now with two attempted assassinations on Donald Trump. How did this affect security or how should it affect security over the coming months? Well, I've been very transparent and some of my fellow agents aren't happy with me, but everything starts from the leadership down. Every, every piece of accountability. You know, I learned as a Marine Corps officer, we were protecting nuclear weapons at the time. There is no fail in that mission. And if there was, it's me. I'm the one that's responsible as the commander. And I think it's time for new leadership. I think they need to reinvent the new world that we live in. It's not the Secret Service of 20 years ago, where a former president gets less resources and we look at it mm -hmm. differently. All that needs to go. We've got to ensure that we have free and fair elections in the U.S., that people aren't afraid to go to these events. And that starts with the Secret Service leadership and, quite frankly, the FBI leadership saying, hey, something's broken here. We have to fix it. And until that happens, 
I'm not sure where we're going to be. Really good to talk to you as always, Tim Miller. Thank you so much for your time. Former Secret Service agent there, Tim Miller, uh, talking to us again. And I uh, hope to talk to him again soon too as this investigation develops. What they do is they have an agent that jumps one hole ahead of time to where the president was at. And he was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engage that individual, at which time the individual took off. Now, in the bushes where this guy was is a AK-47 style rifle with a scope, two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had uh, ceramic tile in them, and a GoPro, which he was going to take pictures of.